I guess uh, another question for you is, um, what are some of your just kind of go to tips for beta go to tips for beta testing in general? We kind of talked about breaking down yeah. some of those walls, et cetera. But okay. what are some like I need to have these in order to make sure that my beta test is, is strong and working efficiently? Yeah, um, you could break it down into a couple um, into two categories, really. There's the there's what you need for each individual test and then there's kind of what you need for your program to succeed. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say, you know, on each individual test, you really need to make sure you're working with the right customer mm -hmm. for each one, because um, depending on the type of product you're launching and in what environment, you know, some some companies or for some products, you don't have a ton of customers in that test. You know, maybe mm -hmm. you have like up to 50, whereas in others, you have several thousand. You're working with a large data set. But um in either situation, you want to make sure that you're working with the right customer. Um, mm -hmm. If you're surfacing, if you're surfacing feedback that might result in a deviation of plan for the product teams, it's really important to be able to say, even if you don't have a huge testing pool, hey, this is your target customer. This is who you're trying to sell to. Um, this is who you want to adopt your product. And even though there may be only like 50 of them in this test, they represent 50,000. You know, um, so it's really important to have the right testers and not only by definition for the ideal customer profile or ICP for that product, but also in terms of the level of engagement that they'll give you in the test. So, um, you know, you can we can turn on a feature or invite people to a test. Um, we can invite thousands. But if we only are hearing feedback from a select few and they're the loudest voices in the room, I feel like everyone has this in their beta testing community. They have their, we call them our beta heroes, right? It's like mm -hmm. they're there no matter what test it is. They want to try it. Um, they want to get in there. But you need to make sure you're having, um, you're getting feedback from a diverse set of testers and you're not just hearing from the same people. Um, over and over again, um, and making sure that um, the loudest people in the room proverbially aren't necessarily the ones that are steering, that you're mm -hmm. balancing that out, um, making sure you're getting people that are more of like the lurkers in the test to come in and also share. Um, so I think, you know, as you're getting started, putting putting some sort of um, gauging interest early and trying to figure out who are the people that I'm going to rely on for this test um, is important. So you want to make sure that you have the right testers. Um, and then I think um, it, it's back to what you were saying, Chris, like the, the project plan, the beta plan, that test, whatever you're going to do, you have to make the goals of the test really clear. You have to know what you're going into learn. So um, working with the user researchers is great um, before going into any beta tests because you look back over the research that they did. You're like, okay, that was then. This is now. Mm -hmm. What's changed to our earlier conversation? What are what are uh, what's new in the environment that we need to address in the beta test that wasn't captured by the research because that was done at a different time? Mm -hmm. um, and also, like, what are any assumptions that we might have about this product that we want to test? So you want to really um, define what you're going in there to learn. It's more than just kicking the tires on something, right? And making sure that nothing falls off and it works. There's there's also, um, is, is this product a fit for this customer? Is there some glaring missing component that they absolutely need to get value from it? So um, you wanna define that really well in the project plan. And then as another component of that project plan, I'm laughing a little bit because it's like you have to have you have plan A and then you have plan B, C. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> like something's gonna go wrong. Yeah. Something's gonna Always. go wrong. Always. Um so you have to have your backup plans, you have to have your mitigation strategies. If I can't find enough of this kind of seller, what am I gonna do? You know, what are all the channels that I can use to hear from sellers or um, from customers? Um, and then I think another component of that plan, and this is especially true for any kind of new product launch, is you want to understand where all of your one-way doors are hmm. um, and how that's going to affect your timeline. So, for example, if you um, are launching something and the marketing team's like, we're going to have a TV spot and we're going to feature this product front and center and that is on, you know, August 2nd and we've paid this amount of money, you know, so you need to like understand where the, where the business is making investments along the development path of the product 
um, because that's gonna that's gonna help you set your whole timeline of like how how soon do I need this? How soon do I need this? You know, and if you and if you are aware of those in the future, then you know when to start ringing the alarm to ask for more resources or to ask for a pivot and strategy or even to like change some of those dates, right? Um, so all of that goes into the project plan. Super important. Um, that's a that's a big one. And then I think from a from a personal standpoint, I think you really need to have two components to be a great beta. We have we have two roles. We have beta program managers and beta specialists. And beta specialists are more on the kind of engagement support side of things. Okay. And yeah, and the program managers are the strategic product project design side. Um, and really for both roles, you need two main things. One, um, one of my um, beta managers said this as he was interviewing for the beta manager role, and it was so great. He was like, you need to get that product like in your blood, you know, mm -hmm. like you need to really care about what's happening with that. You need to get on their team, you know, even though we are not on, we're not in a product org, we're in a customer success org, but you need to be like a part of that team. You need to really care about what's happening with that product and have a passion for the product and the customer. And then the other thing that you need is curiosity. You need to be curious, like endless well of curiosity. What's happening here? You know, um, don't don't take anything right away at face value. Dig for it, you know, because that's I think that's the the um, one of the mi big values that a beta program can provide, you know, because when you when you get um, feedback from different sources, the feedback can be kind of flat, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. you don't always know what people mean when they give you that feedback. They're like, oh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't use it. It was too complicated for me. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. I didn't have time. It's like when you're engaging with the beta team and the beta program, you have a team of people that are going to chase that down for you. You know, they're going to really dig in and figure out what's going on here. Um, and so I think having that that curiosity in terms of the product experience and also the curiosity around the business need that the product is trying to solve is really big because that's when I think our team can really come in and make an impact when they say like, Hey, product teams, like we understand your product. We understand your customer. We know what you're trying to do and we need you to consider this, you know? So, um, those are, I think are some pretty, yeah, some pretty big pieces.